Hey guys, how's it going today? I hope we're doing well. So in this video, we're going to be covering the scikit-learn pipeline object, which allows us to chain objects together or chain operations together. Essentially, in machine learning general, we have a flow from input to output where we have some data, some matrix where it's either like the test or train matrix. And then we feed that through a series of operations like scaling. And then at the end to an estimator, like a random forest or some other uh, machine learning model. And that gets our output. So today we're going to be using the scikit-learn pipeline object, which allows us to naturally chain those objects together. So let's get started. I already have here import pandas SPD. I'm not sure if we're actually using NumPy, but it's a good start. And train DF and test DF for the California housing data set. So here we can go ahead and look at train DF dot head. And it looks like da, 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 it looks like this where we have longitude, latitude, housing median age, total rooms. I'm not gonna explain the data set, but basically it's different. Each row is a different location in California. And we're going to be using, uh, we're gonna be trying to predict the median house value. Okay, that's a regression problem. Uh, this, this pipeline object does work for classification projects uh, as well, but this is gonna be a regression problem. So we are going to treat uh, for the whole pipeline that this is our input matrix of all of these columns where it's this column all the way up until this column. And then the, the y's of the prediction is, is this vector right here. Okay, so what we're gonna do first, so after we just show you, I'm gonna show you test df.head to make sure that you're, you're happy with how that looks. We'll get back to that later. Okay, and now we are going to just convert these into our NumPy matrices. So this is very, very easy. We can do x train and y train. This is equal to train df dot to numpy convert that to a numpy matrix and then we just need to grab so for x train we need all the rows and then all of the columns up until the last one but not including the last one and then this is for y train it's going to be pretty much the same except this is going to be removing the colon there for just the last column and then this is going to be pretty much the same thing for x test except this will be converting it to test so right that is test that is test this is test and that is test. And then we should be able to see that if we have x train dot shape, y train dot shape, x test dot shape, not hespape dot shape, and y test dot shape, we should see we have 17,000 rows for the, the training and it's gonna be eight columns for the input and just one column for the output. And the same thing, but just 3000 examples for the output. Now, I honestly don't like many people's pipelines tutorials because they don't show the whole thing of what you can do with this. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to apply a different transformation to each of the different uh, vectors in here, because a lot of them show you just, okay, we'll use the standard scaler, which I can show you. Uh, we're gonna be importing this anyway from sklearn.preprocessing. We'll import the standard scaler. So what that one does, what this scaler does, is it standardizes these objects. It's a particular transformation, but that's not always the right transformation. We uh, the correct transformation for our objects, or at least it's definitely not the only choice. So I'm going to show you how we can combine both standard scaler as well as the other common one. There's actually a few common ones, but a very common one, min max scaler. Okay. So standard scaler, it, uh, it standardizes, which means it, um, it basically converts to a normal distribution curve. And min max scaler is generally used to change values to be between zero and one. So the reason we use standard scalar is for values like longitude and latitude, which are gonna be going into the negatives as well. And for these ones, the rest of these are gonna be positive values. So we're gonna be happy with min max scalar. Now it's just a bit of a rule of thumb and it's not uh, super particular what I said there, but it, it's somewhat true. But the point is that I'm gonna show you that we can apply uh, different transformations to each of the columns. So we're gonna also need this thing soon called function transformer. And we're also gonna to need to import uh, from copy import deep copy so that we don't actually uh, kill our objects that I'll, I'll show you in a second why we need that. So what I'm going to do is I want to first uh, fit a scalar or an actual transformer uh, for, I'll fit one for these two columns. It actually is what it's fitting is actually it's, it, one transformer is going to itself fit for this column and for this column. It's not like it's fitting the exact same thing to both. Uh, and then I'm going to fit another scalar to uh, the other columns over here for the input. And I'm not going to do anything to the output. So to do this, I want a uh, standard, standard scalar for the first two columns. 
So I'm going to do this with std scalar is equal to standard scalar bracket 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 dot fit. You want to fit it with the x train, except not all of it. It's only going to take uh, the first two columns, as I said, which is I'm just going to write that as colon two. That says all the rows and then the first two columns. Now we're also going to get a min max scalar and we're going to scale that. We're going to uh, fit that well like this min max scalar and then call it with dot fit and then x train x train all the columns and then just basically all of the columns except um, except the first two and I can leave it just as the colon to the end because this uh, this y thing has already been excluded. It's just going to go up to this. Okay, so now what I did is I fit two different scalars, which basically set the parameters and it knows what transformation to actually apply to the data when we feed data into it later, uh, based off of the values that I gave here, because you always want to apply the exact same function, the exact same numbers to, uh, to any pre-processing. I haven't used the word pre-processing, but that's really what we're doing here, uh, step, okay? So that's why I fit it with the X train and we're not gonna ever fit this, this scalar with a different thing again. Now, to do this, to basically give this one, basically make a master transformer where we have, uh, this thing is gonna be function transformer where it's really gonna be a combination of both of these things. And we're not gonna use this thing quite yet. We are gonna use it very shortly, but we're gonna make something that basically, uh, it's just a function that's gonna use, call both of these things. And then we're gonna make a, we're gonna pass that function to this function transformer. And if that was confusing, don't worry, I'll show you, it's really not that bad. So I'm gonna define something called preprocessor, which is just going to take an entire matrix, we'll call it X, so whatever X it may be, it's not necessarily the train, uh, but it's always gonna be using the parameters from uh, that were fit from this train here. Apparently I called this FOT, so I'm glad I happened to go over that. Okay, define preprocessor of X. We're going to first copy, A equals numpy.copy, X because I don't really want to lose that and now what we're going to do is set A's first two columns so all the rows and then colon two we're going to set that equal to the standard scalar standard scalar and it's going to dot transform so we do tr standard scalar dot transform which means actually apply this uh, this transformation and we're going to pass it X colon up until so the first two columns again same thing so we're setting a's first two columns which is just a copy of this thing uh, to the transformation of those two variables now we're going to do a sub colon and then you could probably guess it uh, colon two so the opposite here or sorry <laughs> that's funny how i said you can guess it and then i did something wrong uh, two colon instead we'll set that equal to the min max scalar min max scalar dot fit uh, and we'll pass it x not train i was going to pass the train x and then the same thing all the rows and then two colon all right so we got this new matrix x or a which is a copy of x but the correct transformations applied these these transformations applied and then we're just going to return a so now that we have this function and hopefully i did everything right we'll find out shortly uh, we're going to call preprocessor on x test just to just to show what's happening here. So preprocessor of x test, we see min max scalar is not callable. Okay, let's find out together what I did wrong. So equals min max scalar dot fit. We pass it x train, and here I accidentally uh, there we go. Okay, hopefully that will be right. That is still wrong. Float argument must be a string or a number not min max scalar. So I said dot fit and I meant to do dot transform. Okay, I apologize for those errors, but if we call preprocessor on X test, we should see that it did the transformations that we wanted it to on that object. But we'll also see that if we leave this in here, X test is not actually itself being modified, which is good. We don't want that. That's because we made a full copy of it first. Okay, so we know that that's doing at least uh, something good. <laughs> we, it does, it's really not a full confirm of what we wanted, but I, it, I assure you that's that's what we wanted it to do. So now what we can do is preprocess, uh, not quite preprocess transformer. We'll set this object equal to a function transformer. So we'll make this function transformer object, and we pass it 
this preprocessor function. So that this way, this is basically just making our own scikit-learn transformer object, which is going to do this custom thing that uh, uses these specific transformers to do a particular transformation of the input. So now what we can do, and I'll just output for you this because it's kind of interesting, it, kind of interesting what it looks like, even though we really don't have to do this. Preprocess transformer is uh, is this object right here. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is import the pipeline object. So this is what the main video is about. From sklearn.pipeline, we're going to import pipeline object. Pipe, pipeline. And we're also going to make at the same time, uh, we're gonna import the linear model because we're gonna make a linear regression model. From sklearn.linear model, we will import linear regression. And then we'll do P1, so our first pipeline. It's as simple as this, we make a pipeline make a pipeline where we pass it, we'll give it tuples of names of stuff. So we'll just say, uh, this is really the scalar or preprocessor, whatever you want to call it. And this, we're going to pass it the preprocess transformer. Okay. So we want to do this first. And then secondly, we want to do, and I'll, I'll do it like this so you can see it. Uh, basically linear regression, we'll do a linear regression on the model or a linear regression model. And then we're just going to pass it a base linear regression. Okay, just like that. Now, what's really cool is we can see P1 here, or not P2. Our first pipeline looks like this, where we do a scalar, and it's a function transformer. Then we do a linear regression, and it's like this. Okay, so now that we made our pipeline, we can import, I will get uh, from sklearn.metrics, import mean absolute error so that we can look at the error on our model, which we're about to make. And we're going to make a nice function right here called fit and print and it's going to take a pipeline it is going to take in all of these objects as before although i'm just going to set their default arguments to uh to the same name that way it's it by default uses you know what we're going to use which is train and test so we're going to do x train is x train and y train is y train and x test is x test and Y test is Y test. I may have got cut off at the end there, but don't worry, it's just what I said it was. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is first, it is going to fit the uh, the, the pipeline. So we'll do p.fit with X train and Y train. Okay, so that's important. We fit the transform. And then what we're gonna do is get train preds so this is the predictions for the training set. This is equal, we've seen this before, except this is now with a pipeline, we can still do p.predict with x train. And now we can do test preds. So we'll get the test predictions is p.predict on x test. And then we'll just make, uh, I'm just gonna copy this in here because I see no point of typing it out with you. Uh, basically, I'm just going to print a couple things, which is the training error, and that's the mean absolute error uh, and then you pass it to the train predictions and the actual train. And the test error is the mean absolute error on the test predictions and the Y test. So what this should do is given a pipeline and I'll pass these arguments by default, it's going to actually fit the transform and the, the whole pipeline. So it's gonna, so the, the first part of the pipeline was already fit earlier. There's actually a way to fit it in here, but I'm not gonna make that necessary. Um, and then, so it fits the whole transform, which is runs the pipeline and then runs the scaler, and then it fits the linear regression model itself. It gets training predictions, it gets testing predictions, and it's gonna give the error. And it's so little code to have all of this nice and pretty for us to set up an excellent machine learning, uh, basically, project, however we want, however many want models we want to make. We can just do this thing, and I'll just say, uh, save this here, and then we can call fit and print with P1 with p1 shows the training error was we we're off by about fifty one thousand uh dollars it's dollars so if you uh remind yourself to take a look at what our data set actually is the median house value is uh what we're trying to predict here and so if we're off by you know fifty thousand dollars that's not too bad here's the test error but then again okay if we wanted to make a better model or a different model than this let's try let's try a k nearest neighbors regression model okay and Assuming this is assuming that all of the models are happy with the given transformations that we're doing, uh, which is that um, our preprocess transformer. If you're unhappy with that, you know, of course, you'd have to make a different pipeline uh, and and switch it up a little bit. 
but you know it's it's probably fine what we did so we'll do from sklearn.neighbors we'll import k neighbors regressor as k and r no that's not what i wanted to call it if i wanted to call it that i would call it that google collab helps way too much sometimes okay so then i'm going to make a second second pipeline p2 is pipeline and actually i'm just going to copy it because it's a lot easier that way here is our pipeline and the only thing I'm going to change is at the end here, I'm going to change this to, uh, I'll just say, I'll just change this part to KNN. So K nearest neighbors regression, and this is going to be a KNR. And we can pass some parameters here. I'll send it a KNR of, you know, maybe number of neighbors equal to, I don't know, seven. We'll see how that does. And then that's all we needed to do so that we just do call fit and print with P2. And then we find out, hey, it actually did a lot better. Our new k, k nearest neighbors model did a lot better. Um, you can see it uh, it did start to overfit a little bit because we have a big difference between the training set and the test set, except you know, we'd rather that clearly this linear model didn't quite do as what we wanted it to. And of course, if we wanted to make a random forest, go ahead and make a random forest. I'll just copy one in here rather than writing all the code for you again. Here's a, piece, uh, a third pipeline here. I don't want to call that KNN. That's, uh, that's a random forest. And just to make sure you can see it. Uh, yeah, we'll make a random forest with 10 trees and a max depth of seven, fit and print P3. And we can see, hey, okay, the KS, K nearest neighbors model was actually better. That's great. So sklearn pipeline, I didn't show you everything you could do with it, but I showed you a really flexible approach so that you can actually do different transformations and send it a model all in one. It's a great object to use. You don't always have to use it. It's not something you, you have to use for sure, but it can definitely be convenient for many circumstances. So if you enjoyed the video, please drop a like. If you aren't subscribed, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one, guys.